Oh, so what's going on with the elections? I'll tell you what happened. Russia hacked another le election. China hacked another. The beast. The bear of Revelation chapter 13. Behold, I saw a beast. He come rising out of the sea. had feet of a bear. That's Russia. The enormous red dragon sends stars from the sky to the earth. That's China. Revelation chapter 12. Verse 3. The enormous red dragon. That's China. Russia and China. They hacked this election. Clearly Joe Biden didn't actually get elected. Clearly Joe Biden didn't actually win the election. <laughs> and now we see the love of money, friendship with this world preachers having meltdowns. Have you seen that? Paula White with her showing off her body with her shoulder all out. <laughs> Imagine if every time I made a video, my hair was all done perfect and slick. And, you know, I was just tight shirt, showing off, you know, I just, just lifted weights so that I'm all pumped up and all trying to look all sexy. <laughs> That's what these people are. <laughs> Kenneth Copeland. There's a video out there of Kenneth Copeland having a meltdown. I'm just saying, the love of money, friendship with this world, Christians, are about to get pounced upon by the beast. And, 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 and uh, proof is what's happening in the world right now. And God is saying, I'm going to allow it. God is saying, I'm going to allow the beast to rise to power. The government of the Antichrist. See, the Antichrist is just a man, but the beast is a government that has a navy because it has comes rising out of the sea. It has nukes because it sends stars from the sky to the earth, and the sky is rolled up like a scroll. So the beast has nukes. The beast has a navy. That's Russia and China, folks. Together, Russia, China, and Islam is the beast. Ten of the leaders, Putin, Jinping, Trudeau, Obama, the Ayatollah of Iran. I'm just saying. Possibly Kim Jong-un, if he's not assassinated. Whoever survives nuclear war, out of those guys, the ten leaders. And meanwhile... The lukewarm, disobedient Christians who've turned aside for money, they're all going to receive their judgment. And we hear them teaching, oh, that's, we're in a new era. We're in a new era. A new era. Guess what? Let me explain it to you. We were in the era of the gospel. Revelation chapter 14, the gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people. Revelation chapter 14, verse, starting in verse 6. That's the era ever since the day of Pentecost. So we had, we had Moses... And then we had the prophets, okay? And then with John the Baptist, he was the end of the prophets. And then we had the New Testament, the gospel being preached up until probably 2020, till like January 2020. And then a new era, the era of judgment. Okay, so Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. The gospel goes out to every nation, language, tribe, and people. And then the hour of God's judgment comes and Babylon the Great falls. And so we go to a time of judgment where the mark of the beast comes out. All the foolish virgins fall away from the faith. Many are called, few are chosen. Now, who are the foolish virgins? They're people who've been Christians for 20 years and have never entertained strangers for some by so doing have entertained angels unaware. And there's a group of angels that were sent to them that appeared to be just regular people. And they dissed them. They mistreated them. Or they ignored them. Or they refused to help them. I'm talking about angels of God who are sent unaware. And they never helped them. Oh, they've been Christians for how long? 20 some odd, 30 some odd years? They've read the scriptures. Many of them have become pastors and preachers. And they go, they have Christmas dinner with the family and friends. And they have Thanksgiving dinner with family and friends every year. But never once have they ever done what Jesus said to do. He said, when you have a banquet, do not invite your friends and family. He literally said, don't, don't invite your friends and family. He said, go out and invite the crippled, the lame, the homeless, the poor, the widows. And the orphans. 
They've been saved. They've been serving God for how long? And then they're going to talk about once saved, always saved. No, there's a difference between sozo, which is in this world, which is a salvation in this world, and inheriting eternal life. They might experience sozo in this world as God is trying to bring them to that place where they surrender to him. But they never did. They never did. Instead, they turned aside to get more money, wealth, riches, money, riches, wealth, rich, prosperity, prosperity, prosperity. And then when God sends them an angel unaware, a homeless person on the side of the road, they go, oh, can I help you? As they roll their window up and leave it a little crack, can I help you? And then they're going to talk about how bold they are. Oh, I'm afraid of coronavirus. I ain't going to wear no mask. Meanwhile, they're terrified of a homeless person who's on the side of the road trying to knock on their window. Say, please help. I'm starving. Oh, sorry, sir. I don't have any money on me. I don't even. All I got is credit cards. And they do that intentionally so they don't have to deal with people like that. What they should have done is done a U-turn, went to the McDonald's, got a, got a, you know, a double McDonald deal, whatever it is, and brought it back to the guy so he could at least have a full meal. I'm talking about spending eight to ten dollars, so to help people. And then, oh, Lord, bless me. I want prosperity and money. And then many of them, the whole wages are the wages of, of a prostitute. And the, and the ministers, what was Judas? What did Judas Iscariot do? The Bible says that Judas Iscariot would reach in to God's offering and help himself and do what he pleased with that money. And many of the pastors, their whole wages are the offering of Judas Iscariot. They're constantly reaching in to that offering. Their whole, all their, their whole. And you know why it's, you know why it's a sin? It'd be one thing if they were out there being a doer of God's will. It'd be one thing if they were entertaining strangers and by so doing, inadvertently entertaining every once in a while, angels unaware. It'd be one thing if they were having a banquet every once in a while and bringing in the poor and helping people. But instead, they, they take money out of the offering as wages. And I'm talking about pastors. And then they, eh, 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 it's all theirs. They want to keep it all for themselves. They buy a home and cars on the wages that are God's offering. And then they close those doors and close and lock the car door and won't help anybody. Won't give anyone a ride. Don't want to help a homeless person. Don't want to help anybody. Uh, oh, no, I'm walking in prosperity. I don't know about you. Meanwhile, there's a multitude of angels who were sent. They took on the form. And I'll tell you a little story. This happened. This is true. And the reason I can preach on this is because I am a doer of God's word. This one time I was out. Oh, I've encountered angels unawares many times. One time it was in the church. And there was this guy who kept appearing. Not appearing, but he would like... I was at this one church service and he was there and I talked to him and everything he said was like prophetic. I thought, man, that's a powerful man of God. And then I started to think, maybe this guy's an angel unawares. I mean, I don't know. He Like I go to this church and he'd show up there and we'd talk and he'd speak some prophetic word over me. And then I'd be at another church on the other side of town and he'd appear there. Not appear, but he was there. And I was like, started to see this guy all over the place. Then one day I'm in this big church, right? And he shows up. He, I see him from a distance. And he's with a, he's with another guy. And I walk up to him and I say, hey, how's it going, man? And I just started talking. And he said, he, he goes like this. We're here to see what the leadership of the church is going to do about this guy. And he pointed to his friend. Now, his friend looked clearly drunk. His eyes were glossed over. He was like swaying. And um, he was like, yo, I'm homeless. I need help. And... I knew in my heart that God didn't want me to really do anything but step back and watch. And I watched as those two guys, the one guy that I had seen before and the other guy who looked like a homeless drunk. And I saw him talk to the pastor. I saw him talk to the guest preacher. I, talk, I saw him talk to the, uh, the associate pastor. I saw him go around and talk to all, a bunch of people in the leadership of the church. And this was, you know how after a service, everybody kind of is muddling around, kind of loitering around. And they get in little groups where they're a little group of four or five people talking over here, a few people talking over here. And so I watched them as they went and talked to the pastor, talked to the associate pastor, the guest speaker, all these different people. And I remember I was watching because I, I wanted to see what was going to happen too. And the whole time I'm feeling like in my heart these are angels unaware. 
And I had decided, well, as soon as they're done what they're doing, I'm going to go talk to them and see if I can help them, you know, if I can step into that place of doing what I need to do. Then they came walking right back to me. And I said, hey, is there anything I can do for you guys, man? I'm, you know, I'm here to help. Anything? And, then, and the guy's like, no, no, no. We're here to find out what the people of this church are going to do. And I was like, okay. Like, they weren't there to test me. They said, no, 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 no. We're not there to test you. We're here to test them. Then I saw the two of them walk into a crowd of people. Now, this was a church that had about, probably on a Sunday service, had between two and 3,000 people. So after service, there was at least five or 600 people muddling around in this crowd, right? I watched those two guys walk into that crowd. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to go talk to them. I gotta, I'm going to hang out with these guys today. I'm going to buy that guy lunch. I'm going to do whatever I need to do to help them. I watched them walk into that crowd. And then I was distracted for like a moment. And then I went into that crowd to find them. And they disappeared in that crowd. They were gone. They literally went into a crowd of people and disappeared there. You would think that they would go out behind the building or hide behind a rock somewhere and disappear from there. No, they went into a crowd of people and were gone. And there was no place else for them to go. That was a crowd of people. I just had watched them walk over there. I looked the other way and then I looked back over there and I thought, I'm going to go over there and talk to them. And I had seen them actually walk into the crowd of people. And then when I got to that crowd of people, I'm looking around. They weren't anywhere. I'm just telling you. And the Lord had already told me they're angels unaware. And so that was confirmation when they walked. And nobody in that crowd of people saw them. That's. And nobody and none of and the leadership of the church. Let me pray for you. Oh, yeah. Let me pray for you. Oh, I'm not giving you any money. You're just going to buy beer with it. I'm just saying. Another time. I was out doing street ministry and I saw this homeless guy. And the Holy Spirit said, just offer him lunch. And most people don't even want to do that. Most people go, oh, mm, didn't hear it. Walking the other way. Some people even walk even faster to get out of there. Some people jump in their car, put it in drive as quick as they can. Don't want to, don't want to feel conviction. So I'm, I remember I was at a cash and carry or a Publix or something in Florida on Nebraska Avenue, right on on Nebraska and MLK. If you, if you, some of the, you from Tampa know exactly. Oh yeah, there's a cash and carry. It's either a cash and carry or a Publix. Or maybe it's an Albertsons. I don't know. But so I'm over there and there's a gas station on the corner. And I see this homeless guy. And the Holy Spirit said, just ask him, you know. So I took it. I, I, I said, hey man. You know, I'll, if you want lunch, I can, I can help you with lunch. And he said, yeah, I do. But he said, let me go get a friend. And so he goes around the corner and he comes back with this other homeless guy. So now I got two homeless guys. And they were homeless. They looked shabby clothing, you know, sunburned. Um, the one guy looked really, he was like gl eyes glossed over. He was hammered. I mean, he was drunk. And so I took him into my house. And um, the Lord spoke to me and said, offer him Anything that I, I, so I said to him, I said, anything I can do for you, what can I do for you? And I was afraid one of them was going to say like, oh, I need a bus ticket to Atlanta or something, you know, 80 bucks or, or, uh, you know, oh, I, you know, I need 150 bucks cash or something like that. I was afraid. But you know what? I asked the first guy, anything I can do for you? What do you want me to do? Anything you ask, I'll do it. If I can do it for you. You know what he said? He said he wants bread and butter. And I was like, like, you mean like literally like bread and butter? And I gave him a, a little stick of butter and a loaf of bread. And he sat down there and, and just lathered up the bread with butter. And blah, blah, blah. He ate like half a loaf of bread and covered each piece of bread with the like, you know, bunch of butter. He, that's all he asked for. And then I asked the other guy. And again, I was afraid. What if he wants, you know, a flight to Los Angeles or something or you know, oh, I got family in New York City. I need a bus ticket or something. I thought, I don't know. You know what he said? He said he wants a fresh pair of socks and a shower. And so I was like, Pfft. so I let them both take a shower. I gave them both a fresh pair of socks. I offered them more socks because I had just bought a brand new thing of socks. I said, here, you can have two pairs of socks. He's like, no, no, just one pair. 
I was like, no, but I got a bunch of extra socks here. You can have two pairs of fresh socks. He's like, no, I just want one pair. So they didn't even want hard. One guy wanted bread and butter and to take a shower. The other wanted a pair of fresh, clean socks and to take a shower. How hard is that? Then we sat down to eat and I gave him a, a we had a, we had like a chicken dinner. And just before we ate, the one guy who was really drunk, um, first I might add, when they took a shower, they stunk up the bathroom so bad. Oh my God. It was just like unbelievable smell. Like really a bad smell. Like bad, like ter like homeless person smell. Anyway, so, um, so then we're eating dinner and right before we start to eat, one of them says, give me a Bible. I need a Bible. And he opens to a passage and he starts raving about it. And I, I don't have my Bible within reach right here, but, um, and he starts raving about this passage in the Bible and it, it sounded like the ravings of a madman. And then all of a sudden he put the Bible down and now the whole time I didn't know these these were angels but then after dinner they left and I remember walking them to the door and they, they I remember watching them walk down into the front yard as they were leaving and then I closed the door walked into the living room and the Lord spoke to me and said those are angels unaware and my first thought was no way there's no, no way that one guy he was so drunk his eyes were glossed over I was like that, that can't be right and the way they stunk up the bathroom oh there's no way an angel of God would do that oh mm -mm, no and so and then the Lord spoke to me and said that one guy preached a message and there's a secret hidden message in what it seemed like the ravings of a madman but there's a secret teaching in there and right when the Lord spoke to me that second time, I realized maybe they were angels unaware. And I turned right around and I went to the door. I went outside. Now, it had maybe been 30 seconds to a minute. And I couldn't find them anywhere. And I looked. I went down the street, both sides, went in the back alley, went around, went to the next street over, the cross street. They weren't anywhere. And I'm sorry about homeless people. They don't have a car. They just jump in a car and drive off. I don't know what happened to these guys, but they weren't in the back alley. They weren't in the backyard. They weren't on the sides of the house. They weren't in the street. They weren't in the side street. They weren't on the cross street. And unless they, as soon as I closed the door, they took off running and ran around the corner. They disappeared. And that confirmed that the Lord had just told me they were angels unaware. And then I had to pray, God, what did he mean when he preached that message, you know, from the Bible and he went crazy like a man, man. And then the Lord gave me a revelation of what he said. And there was a powerful message there from God. So basically what I'm saying is God will send angels unaware if you're a, if you're a doer of God's word. And these Christians, they want to say, oh, well, our church gives to the poor. Our church feeds the poor. But that doesn't crucify your flesh. In other words, telling your servants to go feed the poor... Really, they sit there and say, oh, um, tell the associate pastor that pastor says, go out and feed the poor and get all the volunteers to get together to feed the poor. And the pastor doesn't actually do anything. In other words, the pastors are going to hell. And now we're in a new era where God's judgment has begun. It's the end of the age. And if things get better, it'll only be temporary before another disaster comes. Anyway. So the Lord's been telling me that, you know, we see all these prophets saying...